What's going on everyone? Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're going to keep going with the view components we started setting up in our project management app. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We're putting out content pretty much every single day. And uh, if you want to follow along with this series from the very beginning, um, go check it out over on our website at techmaker.tv. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. In the last episode that we did on these view components, uh, we built out this badge which shows up right here and will vary depending on the status of the project. And then if we click into a project, we can see that we also have it here. Now one quick aside, if you followed along with the last episode, toward the very end we actually deleted this color class and that was premature and actually that's wrong. I just kind of put this back and uh, put the wrong thing. So we need to fix that. Um, but we need that for um, these over here to show up properly. Um, so we'll refactor that potentially later, um, but for now, um, that fixes that problem. In this episode, what I want to do is explore the idea of nested components and turn this entire project card into its own component, and then that will have this badge component within it. So um, that'll kind of deepen our understanding of these view components just a little bit more and help us get our feet wet with doing some of the slightly more advanced stuff that you can do. So with that said, let's go over to the code and take a look at what we want to do. Actually, first, I want to go over to my server here and go ahead and stop the server. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new component before uh, we jump to the code. So I'm going to say Rails G component. And I think I'm just going to call it the project overview. And let's go see what that does for us. So let's jump over to the code. I'm going to go ahead and start my server again. And we'll head over to the code. And if we look here, now we have a couple of new files, just like last time. We've also got this project overview component template. So what I want to do first is just open up my projects index. And right at the top, I'm, I'm a big fan of sanity checks, so I just want to render, and then what do we call that? Project overview component.new, no arguments. And let's go see what this looks like. We'll have to log back in again probably. Sorry, let's get that right. and. Now we can see this add project overview template here, which is our default text. So let's see what happens if we just drop all the code for this inside of this uh, template and see what happens. So right now we've got a link to project. So let's just cut this stuff and let's open up our template and replace that with this. So we're definitely going to get an error if we refresh saying, hey, there's no variable project. I mean, I would assume. Um, so let's give it a project. So what do we have here? So we can just come over here and say uh, project project. And then in our component, if I remember correctly, we can define and initialize and then give it a named attribute of project and then we'll say at project equals project and then we'll define an adder reader for project and let's see what this does so cool so now we have our component in a component basically so if we look back over at our uh, project overview component we're using our progress badge component within it and we're essentially just using this like a partial right now. So we're passing in the project, so on and so forth. So we can now take this a fair bit further. So what we can do is say, um, let's define a method name. And then here, let's just say project.name. And essentially what we want to do, what I want to do, is remove all of the method calls from the view. 
So we want to make this template as, as essentially as dumb as possible. We want to like take all of the logic out. Now calling a method isn't really logic per se, but if we can just make it you know, a single word kind of thing, it kind of guarantees that we're not doing any calculations in the view or anything like that. So we're kind of pushing that back to a regular old Ruby class kind of to make it more obvious that what's going on. So um, then we can say uh, description and we can just say project dot description. Now we can also do something where we have something like um, let's call it completion stats because if you look right here we've got this all of this going on. Now all of this is presentation related. There's no actual math that's being called right here. Or it is being called when you call the method, but that's fine. But you know this is essentially kind of a slightly complicated little element that we're showing here or bit of text rather, we could compress that down into an actual method. So let's call that completion stats or something like that. So we'll say completion stats. And then let's copy all of this. And we'll have to modify it a fair bit, obviously. Um, and so what we can do is say, let's put some quotes around this. Um, and then we'll get rid of the ERB and replace that with string interpolation. And then we also want to go ahead and get this, do the same deal here. So this will put string interpolation on and then we'll get rid of these ERB tags that are hanging out. And then the same thing for this. And then we'll check what this looks like as soon as we manage to get this kind of cleaned up. Okay, so what we can do now is jump over to our code and instead of having all of this, we can just print out these methods directly. So we can say completion stats. And then down here, instead of name, we have, or project name, we have just name and here we just have description. And let's refresh and see what it looks like exactly the same so it's still working and then last we can actually switch this to be status and then we can give this a method called status and then just delegate that over to the project cool so what's great is now that we've pushed this back into a Ruby class we can actually refactor this and we can uh, toss a couple of things down in private methods for example so we could come down here and say something like um, uh, display percent complete maybe and then we can copy all of this put that here and then we can t make another method and say something like um, display it's called it a breakdown because what we're trying to do is show like okay so it's whatever percent complete but here's the actual mathematical breakdown of what that means so um, let's cut this now and paste this here I need to put that in quotes and then up here all we have to do is do another interpolation and say display percent complete and then give it a space and then display breakdown and then let's refresh that and see what we get. So that's cool, right? So essentially, we've cleaned up our code and all of this code that we have here is essentially for presentation. So it doesn't really make sense to have this on the model. Um, you know, we could clean it up even more by using delegators and stuff or for the forwardable library, I think, might be the sort of right way to do that but I don't really mind having a few methods that call project dot attribute I think it's fine in this case um, the one thing that we can do further is instead of looping through on the index what we can actually do is say um, what's it project overview component I think it's with collection maybe and then just pass it the projects. Let's delete this and let's see. So if that works, we've basically boiled everything down to one line of code. No, I think I'm missing something. Oh, I have to call render, just kidding, like that. 
Um, initializer must accept project overview. Okay, so let's look at the docs really quick. This is cool. So we'll say view component rails, pull up the library. There's a way to define the, the variable that we want to use. So that's kind of cool that they're using that naming convention. Um, but I saw in here where you could rename it. So what is that? Um, collections with collection parameter. So we want to say with collection parameter project in our case. So if we go back over here to our project overview component with collection parameter project. So let's refresh and see what happens. That's really cool. So now we've got a Ruby class and a little bitty um, component here and one line of code over here. So this is getting pretty nice. I think that cleans up the code really nicely. Um, I'm wondering what else we could do with that, but I think that's fine for now. Um, I know that we could actually, uh, there's some interesting stuff we could potentially do um, with these uh, content areas. So that might be an interesting thing to try out here. But I'm not exactly sure kind of what the benefits and drawbacks of that pattern would be yet. Um, I guess you kind of make it a little more flexible in a way because you could pass in other components potentially. So you could have like a content area here and then over in your index you could pass in um, a different element or something or a different component. I don't know. doesn't seem super useful yet, so I'm not going to do it. Anyway, so I think that's about it for this episode. I think this is pretty cool. I'm going to do another one or two episodes on view components and do the same thing for the, um, the project show page, and we'll just kind of keep pushing on that. I think in this particular uh, project that we're building out, I'm going to kind of take the view component thing to uh, full use just to kind of get some experience with it and play around with it. So if you're into that, uh, definitely follow along with this series. With all that said, I think that's it for this episode, so thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.